On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about softball pitch counts, youth baseball training and mechanics, and some of the things we look for when hiring a strength and conditioning coach. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We are up in Boston, Massachusetts, champion PT and performance. Mike Scaduto, Dave Tilly, Whoa. Dan Pope, <laughs> Lenny Krina, Chrissy Crossity. And I'm Mike. <laughs> I was waiting for you to finish. Finish your own film. Hello. Hello. And I'm Mike. Hello. And we are here with our, our student trifecta again. Lenny, take it away. Whoa, with we student. get some good <laughs> students. You guys wait for this one. I get to memorize these. Jan Conkel from the New York Medical College Center of Physical Therapy in New York City. We have Leanne Cologne from the University of Texas Women's University of Physical Therapy Associates. And we have Cam McDonald from the University of Rhode Island Rams. I don't know about you Go guys. Rams. I think Lenny has Good permanently man. won the, the title it's of... It's entertaining when you screw like up the names. Student, student <laughs> intruders, that's why I just Can't gave jam. up. <laughs> I, I haven't been here for a while, this is good. So, a middle of spring training, but alright, so what we got some great questions again today. I don't really know if we have great questions. I don't remember what the questions are. Oh, but great. we're going to get started with some of our Thank questions. You Jan, are you taking it again? Mm -hmm. see, you yes. see how, so, mental note this future employer. You see Jan taking charge? <laughs> Gymnast. <coughs> That's why. Gymnast take charge. <laughs> T-shirt, awesome. gymnast take charge. No, Whoa. don't do that. Bad. <laughs> All right, Jan, what do we got? Uh, Christy from New Jersey. Hi, Mike and team. Why do you think there are no limits on pitch count or innings for fast pitch softball? Does anyone actually believe a windmill <coughs> is a natural motion of the arm? Oh, that's a good question. So you guys get really excited about Jersey people. We love Jersey. So we're going to have to remember that. So if you're from Jersey and you want your question read, just Go make that loud and yes. clear. Yeah. And these guys get it in there. So okay. let's see. Fast, fast pitch softball. Yes. Yeah, so, so the question is, why aren't there pitch counts with softball players? And I, I would completely agree, right? I think it's kind of silly that we don't. Um, but look, you know, the injury mechanisms are different. The injuries are, are kind of, yeah, they're different than baseball. So baseball, I don't want to say is at the epidemic level because, you know, that's kind of like feeding into some of the crap on the internet that we're hearing from like the media. But the, the injury rates are growing at a rate where we can't control. Right? They're kind of getting a little out of hand in baseball. I don't feel that happened in softball as much. Though. That doesn't mean they don't get injured. I just don't think they escalated to a point where the associations had to step in and make pitch count rules. So I would say that's why they don't have it, but I'm fully on board with that. So now, I don't want to intimidate everyone, but I am my town's local 10U softball coach. So we are at 10U just starting to learn how to pitch. And wow, it's crazy, trust me. So a bunch of my like coaches that coach with me are all former baseball players. It tends to be dads that like baseball that make their daughters play softball, right? So, sorry, <laughs> sorry guys. So, but, uh, so we're, we're trying to teach them how to pitch and we're getting instructors to teach them how to pitch because it is so unique. Baseball, right? Like, look, you throw from short, it's the same as pitching, right? It's just a little bit different with how you kind of put it together. But there is a unique art form to softball pitching that Where did that come from, appreciate. I wonder? Why does it? I, trust me, as a softball coach and as a baseball guy, everything about Somebody softball Somebody tweet us with the history of the me. fastball. Why the is softball. the ball bigger? The ball, because girls can't hit? I mean, that's, that's definitely why the ball's bigger and that's ridiculous. Yeah. Right? That is ridiculous. I just pitched batting practice to my daughter with a baseball in a batting cage literally 36 hours ago and she was crushing the ball. Right? It has nothing to do with the size of the ball. Or make it bright green. Yeah. It's like, what are they, blind? Girls can't see as well as boys? It makes no sense. But you know what happens though? You, their hands are too small to control the glove and to catch that stupid big ball. So it, the, mo the biggest challenge in softball and why they're not having fun at the early ages is because the ball's gigantic. I, I think it's super it's counterproductive personally. I think it's silly, but anyway, I feel like nobody else has any more softballing. But Lenny, you're gonna be you're gonna be here one day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nope. Athletes and gymnasts. We're trying to push athletes to other sports, but I have no answer for the whole pitch count. Um, and wait, I guess because you're not in this position, an overhead position with pitching, so the mechanics are different in the shoulder, maybe, so it's a little more fatiguing to be up here versus down here, but I agree. I mean, why, why should a 
female pitcher go four games in a weekend and throw 400 pitches. I mean, it just yeah. just, just doesn't even make sense. Softball have more slap tears? I don't know. I'm asking. It, well, it's more shoulder, right? If you think, this is all torque related with like the elbow and shoulder. It's all torque related. Theirs is just, and, and it's kind of misleading. But they're not really going behind their body as much as you think because you turn to the side. So don't get me wrong. There's a little bit behind their body. They kind they kind of turn to their side. So, uh, but it's a huge range of motion. You have to generate all this velocity from from the arm in that position. So it's mostly shoulders, not elbow. Mm. And if you really talk about youth baseball, it's kind of a ton of elbow right now. So I, I think that's kind of why it's happening. But, you know, they're probably a little bit loose jointed, hypermobile in general, right? They're using their shoulder at a big range. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, yeah, the injuries are different, but also similar in the same way. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the other thing is that from what I've noticed for softball players is they tend to only have like two to three pitchers on staff and they Good just point. throw like the same people out day after day. Maybe because it's less fatiguing, they're less injury prone, although injuries do happen, we've definitely seen it here. Um, but like they just don't have as many pitchers on staff. It's just a very different mentality in right. baseball, I guess. It's, good, that way. it's super hard. I know. I mean, and we maybe we're it's doing, a skill thing. Like, oof. Not everyone has the skill to be able to pitch. And, it's hard. It, uh, you got. It's hard to learn that. So I get it. That's probably why. It's not like everyone can just pick it up and throw. I mean, you have to. It's different. Uh, but yeah, no. I mean, look. I I'll, honestly, I think if you follow the little league pitch count rules, it's probably too limiting, right? Not that you know I, that'd probably be a good guideline. But I just the stress is less. It's it's stressful, but it's less. So I think that's kind of like, you know, the, the hard part of it. So I, unfortunately, I don't think we have a definitive answer other than we're on board and, you know, let's 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 start moving towards that. I, I'll, I'll back you up. I'll, I'll tweet at the softball the, association. The Delaware group, like Lynn snyder Macklin and Michael Axe, I think they've got some stuff. I know she's always speaking at that injuries and in baseball course in Birmingham on softball injury. So maybe you try to contact her or look something up on PubMed on softball injuries. I just don't see a lot of softball injuries just in my practice. So I'm not as well versed on it, but I know she's got a little bit more education on it than I do. So maybe that's something you look up. Awesome. Who's next? We have Daniel from Birmingham, Alabama. What? Roll time. Hey Mike, I'm a second year PT student working on a capstone project, which is an off season training program for youth baseball athletes. My primary focus is on developing strength, coordination, stability, and healthy throwing mechanics. Do you think that correcting faulty movement can be counterproductive in this population by causing robotic movement patterns? Ah, I like that. That's, we hear that a lot from pitching coaches quite a bit, that we can get too robotic by harping on mechanics a little bit. So I like, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel, so good stuff, roll tide. We, um, uh, yeah, we, I mean, with youth baseball pitchers, you know, with their off-season training, I think you've got a lot of great concepts built in. Um, there are differences between youth and higher level collegiate and professional baseball player pitching mechanics. Youth tend to, tend to be more upright and not have any linear drive, rotational motion, hip trunk separation. There's a difference between them. So I do think at the youth level, it's advantageous for us to teach proper mechanics while they're still learning it. So that way we can reduce some of the excessive stress from poor mechanics, but also maximize their efficiency. So I do think you have to teach mechanics at some point, and I think youth is the way to go. Because once you get up to the pro level, man, you're it's it's pretty it's pretty pretty tight. So what do you guys think? I mean, similar concepts even with some other sports, but what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> not well versed in youth baseball at all, but yeah, but the same concepts apply. Yeah, especially in gymnastics. I mean, like 50% of the time with young kids is, is about keeping it fun and teaching them proper technique. It's like right. all we do. It's just trying to make sure that they're handling the forces at a young age safely and that they're understanding the basics of technique. And then when they get older, you play around with like, you know, what your skills are going to be or what you're trying to do to get faster or jump higher. So I think that anybody in a younger program working with youth sports in general should always try their best to harp on technical awareness more so than, you know, specific stuff. Yeah, that, that's it kind of goes to the don't add strength on top of dysfunction concept, right? I mean, you know, you got to put it in order and having good, you know, proper technique is pretty good. Uh, I think from my understanding of the question, I think a big area that you could add into your project would be like managing their, their throwing in the off season. Like when should they start throwing? How does their training change once they start throwing? And just making sure they're not throwing too much in the off season because we know the statistics of you know throwing year round increases risk of injury by a ton. So yeah, like that could be a big area. Yeah, yeah we want to get them stronger and um, improve their coordination and mechanics, but we don't want them to throw too much. Um, so kind of 
explore that area maybe yeah. a little bit. Especially throw too much or work on some throwing programs for arm strength or whatever you may be trying to do with poor mechanics. So again, just to, I guess, to summarize, answer your question. No, I mean, I, I don't think we're too worried about being too robotic. When you first learn a new skill, this, this is nothing new with baseball, it's a skill acquisition, it is robotic, right? Because you're trying to learn. It's very conscious, right? Before we get to unconscious type repeating movement patterns. So for us with neuromuscular control and how we're trying to get motor learning with these young athletes, that's what we're trying to do. If you don't do it then, it's never gonna happen. Right, so so I'm pro that. Why Lenny's golf swing is uh, struggling so much? I started golfing at the age of 15, never took a lesson, and 26, 28 years later, I can't figure out how to change my swing. It's still, because I never got the basics growing up, so get the <laughs> basics early on, or else you're just gonna have a lifetime of being a motor moron. A, a, lifetime, a lifetime of expensive lessons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you should have got lessons when you're younger. So. Awesome. One more? Yeah. What do we got, Leanne? All right. Chris from Austin, Texas. When first starting out, how did you go about finding talented and trust, trustworthy strength and conditioning coaches to hire? <laughs> Well, we haven't. So. We're still struggling. <laughs> yeah. Love you, Kiefer. It's a constant struggle. Uh, Len, what Just do you kidding. think? You want to tackle it? How, how do we? So, a champion here. We have, you know, four strength coaches full time on staff. Um, you know, that we work with. We all have a strength and conditioning background as well. But what do you think, Len? How how, how do we find good, trustworthy coaches? I think uh, you know, obviously, word of mouth is going to be big. Um, just having a relationship with people in the field that we respect. Uh, we can go to them if we, you know, had a position open and somebody that they would want to hire but maybe they weren't hiring at the time who would they want to bring into their facility and I think another obvious route is the internship program so having an internship program was big for us because that has allowed us to really see people you know firsthand see them in the in the you know in the in the in the field and you know see them practicing with us and see them developing programs and interacting and all that and, and then really respecting that and then bringing them on because we had a position open at the time so it's very rare that we would have a position open uh, at that time, but for example, Duesh, who's one of our coaches, uh, it just all worked out perfectly that he did an internship, and we we offered him a position to stay on because we really were impressed by by his uh, just by his demeanor and how he carried himself. So internship and then word of mouth for us has been huge. Yeah, I, I would agree. And when you're just starting out, if you don't have an internship, which which I think your question is sounds like you're at the very beginning, then you know I think I would value somebody that's gone through somebody else's internship more than just professional certifications, right? Like certification aren't necessarily the end-all be-all right sometimes it's about experience with that certification so I think that's the other thing to maybe look out for is maybe somebody that has done an internship at a strength and conditioning facility that you respect is how I would probably do it if you don't have your own internship program so awesome another great round of questions thanks so much <coughs> please head to MikeRonald.com click on that podcast link and you can fill out the form to ask us some more questions and be sure to head to iTunes rate review and subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode